Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Now, Superman. As our story opens today, Clark Kent sits at his desk in the city room of the newspaper, putting the finishing touches on a follow-up story about the bursting of the great dam at Dyerville. Strange adventure in which Superman played a thrilling part. But already an even stranger adventure is at hand. Above the clatter of the of newspapers, Kent hears the door of a private office open behind him. He half turns in his chair, just as Jay Hamlin, assistant to Editor White, calls him by name. Hey there, Clark Kent. Right here. Come in here a minute. Close the door. This is something very special, Kent. And if Mr. White were here, I know that he'd want you to take it on. Oh, I don't think you know Miss Beaton, do you? No, I'm afraid I don't. Elsie, this is Clark Kent. How do you do? I'd like to know you. Sit down, Kent. Pay close attention. You've heard of Dr. George Haven Beaton, haven't you? Explorer, scientist, archaeologist. Oh, yes, indeed. Well, Elsie's his daughter. Yes, I've known her since she was an infant. Her father is one of my closest friends. Now, here's the situation. Something mysterious and unusual has happened to Dr. Beaton. But uh, suppose you tell the story, Elsie. Sure. It may sound a little silly to me, Mr. Kent. Oh, I'm sure it won't. Go right ahead, Miss Beecher. From the beginning, Elsie. Well, it's, it's this way. Nine months ago, my father went into the jungles of South America, supervised the excavation of some ancient tombs. He wrote to me regularly, and, and everything seemed to be quite all right. How often did you hear from him, Elsie? Oh, about once a week. The last letter came two days before he sailed for Cuba. In it, he told me not to meet him at the boat. Did he give any reason? None at all. He said he'd phone me. Did he? He did. Two hours after the boat docked. What did he say, Miss Beecher? Well, nothing. He sounded almost ghostly. Like a man afraid of his life. Oh, now, you're just imagining things, Elsie. If I know your father, and I do, he's never been afraid of anything. And that's just what had me working with Dad and the instructions he gave me. What were the instructions, Miss Beecher? First, he told me he couldn't see me for quite some time. That in itself isn't natural, Kent. Elsie and her father have always been devoted to one another. Well, go on, Miss Beecher. He said he was going out to Brentwood for a while. But he had to be alone. Uh, did he say where in Brentwood, Miss Beecher? Stonehenge. But he warned me not to try to communicate with him. He said he was quite well and that he'd brought back a native servant to look after him. A half-breed named Zingle. You did try to call him, though, didn't you? Well, I waited until yesterday. Then I, then I couldn't stand it any longer. You phoned? Yes. There was no answer. Your father was using the stone house in Brentwood as a hideaway. Be there. That's just how I felt, Mr. Kent. Now, now you know why I'm so worried. Have you thought of notifying the Brentwood police? Oh, no, I didn't dare. Father despises publicity. He'd be furious with me. There's only one thing to do, Kent. You take Elsie to Brentwood and find out what's what. Why? I'd be glad to. Let's see, it's uh, six now. Suppose we have dinner, Miss Beecham, and then drive out. I'd love to. Well, shall we leave now? Don't want to get out there too late. Well, I'm ready if you are. Let me know the moment you find out anything. Sure thing, Mr. Hamlin. Goodbye, Uncle Jack. Thanks a million. Forget it. And stop worrying. Hey, goodness. What a dreary looking place. Is this Brentwood, Mr. Kent? This is Brentwood, all right, Miss Beach. And I think that's Stone House, back of those trees and behind that iron fence. Dad's there. He certainly doesn't want calls. Why, it looks completely closed up. Yeah, not a light anywhere. Oh, say, I guess we passed the gate. The gate? You know, leading into the ground. Oh. Well, what are you getting out for? Where are you going, Mr. Kent? Well, I, I just thought I'd run back and see if the gates are open. Wait here a minute, will you? Well, don't leave me alone here too long, Mr. Kent. Don't worry, Miss Beecham. I'll be right back. Away from his brother, purposely hidden. Why? Ah, here we are. Now, I wonder if I can get through the fence or over it. Or... Oh! That's a good idea. <laughs> Quite a joke, too. Ah, this looks like a job for Superman. Pretty smart shooting high powered voltage into an iron fence, but not smart enough. Ah. Get back out of the shrubbery and look around. Ah, here's the gate. 
probably electrified, too. Well, I'll just kick it in and drive the car right through. Something like arriving in style. Here goes. Hey, whoever built this gate certainly did want privacy. Well, he won't have it long. I can't say just yet, but things are certainly opening up. Let's turn the car around and see what's going on at that house, eh? Well, what are we going to do? Drive right in? Sure, why not? Well, it doesn't seem exactly as though we're wanted, Mr. Kent. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Ah, here's the entrance. Why, those gates. Did you say you just opened them? More or less. Why? And it looked like they were blown in in a hurricane. Well, they were old and rusty, Miss Beecham. They, they just fell apart. Well, well, what are you stopping here on the driveway for? Why are you switching off the light? Now, look here, Miss Beecham. I'm going to tell you quite frankly that we may run into trouble. Mr. Kent, what do you mean? Now, now, please, don't get hysterical. Well, I really don't. Oh. Miss Beecham, I want to go up to that house and have a look around before, well, before they know we're here. Mr. Kent, do you think, do you think anything's happened to my father? Now, Miss Beecham, honestly, I, I don't think anything, not yet. Then why, why all the secrecy? Why are you leaving me here and, and going to the house yourself? Oh, you must know more than you're telling me. Oh, believe me, I don't. Just that your father and whoever else is with him in the house seem to want privacy. I'm trying to make sure of it. And for some unknown reason, that privacy is vitally important to me. Oh, let me come with you. No, now, please. You just stay here and watch the car. If you see anything, or want me for anything, blow the horn. Oh, Mr. Kent, I'm afraid. I don't like it here. It's awfully quiet. It's dark. No, no, there's nothing to be afraid of. You just sit tight while I investigate. But where will you be? Not too far away. Remember now, if anything happens... Just blow that horn and keep blowing. All right, Mr. Kent. But please hurry. Please hurry. Poor kid. Right stiff. No wonder. I'd like to leave her alone, but she can't be around when Superman's doing his stuff. It looks like he hasn't. Well, I'll just climb up the side of the stone house a little way and see what's doing. second story window of stone house superman peers into the dark interior listens intently a door slams and suddenly the night is stabbed by the wild blowing of the auto horn and the weird baying of hounds what's that somebody's blowing a horn Everybody must be in trouble all right miss beecham i'm coming if you like.
Up in the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. <laughs> Up in the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. Now, Superman. Last poem, Clark Kent has come to the stone house in the suburb of Brenton, with Elsie Beecher, to investigate the mystery surrounding Elsie's father, Dr. George Haven Beecher, the world-famous scientist and explorer. Recently returned from the jungles of South America, Dr. Beecham has hidden himself away with only a native servant for company, and refused to see even his own daughter. Arriving at stone house, Kent had left the car to investigate the house, only to be recalled by frantic blasts of an auto horn. Elsie, left alone in the car, had been attacked by a pair of vicious mastiffs and was in danger of her life. Fighting off the dogs, Kent turned to reassure the girl, only to be faced with a new terror. Listen. That giant man I saw through the tree, he's right, he's gone. Probably only the shadows and the branches. No, I, I know I did. Nothing there now. I can't see a thing. Look, do you see anything? Sure. Yes, now. But I did. I know I did. Well, you heard the tom-tom beating, didn't you? Yes. And I saw the man, a gigantic man. He just stood peering. If he isn't there now, at least I don't think so. Yes, I know he isn't. He's close to me, hiding there, stealing up on me. No, he's not, Miss Beecher. Now, look here. You stay here, and I'll have a look around. Oh, no. Don't go, Miss Beecher. Don't leave me alone. I'll come, too. I, I can't tell what we may run into. I don't care. I feel safer with you. Please. Come on. We'll leave the car right here. Well, what are you going to do? First of all, we want to get into that house. It looks completely deserted, but I know someone's in it. My father, do you think? I'm not sure yet. Hold my arm, Miss Beecher. Wait. I thought I heard something. Mr. Kent, I did. The tom-tom. Quick. Back in these bushes. Crouch down. There. Mr. Kent, look out there in that patch of moonlight. Great Scott. There. That's what I saw, Mr. Kent. It is a giant. No, no. Not a giant, Miss Beecham. It's a man. He's big, all right, but it's a man. A tremendous big black man. Kent? He hit me. Who is he? What's he doing? I'd like to know. I wonder if it's the one I heard walking in the house. Look. Look, he's moving again. He's coming this way. We're in the shadow. He can't see us. Here, slip this way toward the house. Keep down as much as you can. He heard me. He's running, Mr. Kent. Quick! You hide in there, Miss Beecham. Back in that angle of the wall. I'll take care of this. Oh, no, no, he'll kill you. Go on, quick, stay out of sight. Don't move till I call. Quick, Miss Beecham, run! It's so hard. I can't run. Now then, the girl out of the way, Superman goes to work. He'll give that giant a chance to try his voodoo on me. He's coming this way, all right. Well, my friend, you're due for a shock. About three more steps and out you go. All right, you. Uh, what you do? Never mind what I'm doing. What are you doing, and where did you come from? Uh, so, you come out of car. I've been looking for you. i fix you, white man. Look out. I'm giving you fair warning. Oh, you sure run. I catch you now. I'm not running. Oh, you want to fight, do you? <laughs> Got it. I catch you now. I cut you in half. Don't pull that knife. Knife don't bother me. Just going to pick you right off the ground. Uh, uh, Up over my head. Uh, you put me down. I kill you. You won't have a chance. Going up to the top of that tree. I know. Why, no. no. There. I'll hold you for a while. Now, let that girl come out. Miss Beecham. Miss Beecham. I saw her. She never saw me. Back to Clark Kent again. All right, Miss Beecham. Right here. What happened? Why didn't you see? Oh, I didn't dare look. I just crouched into the wall as close as I could. The giant. Where is he? Oh, he, he just went away. I shoot him off. Didn't you hear us? Well, I heard you arguing, and then, then a crash. Well, what happened? Why, uh, he tripped and fell. Come on, Miss Beecham. I want to get into the house, see if that uh, door's open. Uh, no. Oh, it's locked from the inside. In that case, I think we're justified in housebreaking. Stand back a little, Miss Beecham. But you can't break through that. That isn't so strong. I'll just throw a stone at the lock. Stand back of that tree. It might bounce. All right, now. 
broke it all to bits. But I told you it wasn't strong. Well, now, quick, inside. Do you think it's safe? Come along. Safer than outside just now. Maybe I can fasten what's left of that door behind us. Yes, look. All I broke was the lock. And there's the steel bar that drops right across it. There. There we are. No. Black as pitch. I can't see a thing. Now, wait. While I strike a match. There seems to be kind of a hole in it. Yeah. Better? Not much. Yes, you're right, Miss Beach. We are in a hall. This looks like the library or living room. Come on. Oh, here's a piece of candle. Oh, quick. quick. The match is almost out. Ah, stuff. Ah, now I can at least see where we're going. This dreadful, dreadful place, Mr. Kent. Why, it, it looks haunted. Yes, uh, I admit I've seen more attractive places. But the fact... What was that? Something creeping. Quiet. I don't hear anything. It's kind of a creepy. Upstairs, Mr. Kent. Where do you suppose my father is? I don't know, Miss Beach. I'm afraid he isn't here. Oh. What makes you think that? I don't think anybody's here. If there were, well, why haven't they turned up? They made enough noise breaking in. Listen. Upstairs. Mr. Kent, there's someone walking around in the room just above us. All right. Stay here, Miss Beecher. Oh, no. What are you going to do? I must find out who or what that is. Oh, let me come, too. No, not this time, please. Something's going to happen. Easy now, Miss Beecher. I don't want to be like that. We're all right. Oh, Dad. Where's Dad? What's going on here? Mr. Kent, what is it? Miss Beecher, I don't know. There's only one way to find out. That's by going right up there and looking. Oh, Mr. Kent, don't do it. Don't no, do I've it. I've got to. And you've got to stay here. Please, it's the only way. All right, if that's what you want me to do. Oh, good. Thank God. That's the way to talk. Don't be lonely. If anything happens, I'll come right down again. Oh, hurry. Hurry as fast as you can. If you want me, just call. Oh, don't you, don't you want some candy? What, leave you in the dark? I've got the matches. You just stay right there in that room, Miss Beecham. Now then, let's see who is in that room. Okay, so this is the door. Good doing. Thought so. Huh? Lock. That, too. There is someone inside. I can hear him breathing. Open up, please. Open this door. Come on, you can hear me all right. I said open this door. Well, if you don't open this door, I'll break it down. Keep away. Keep away or I'll shoot. Open the door. I warned you. For the last time, get away. Get away. Get back. Don't try that gun again. Here, give it here. You, you haven't got... Stop that. Give me that gun. That's better. Now then, you track me down, but you won't get it. You'll never get it. Put that chair down. Now listen to me, will you? I'm your friend. You're lying. You can't fool me. Are you Dr. Beecham? You know I am, but you'll never get what you're looking for. Doctor, I'm not looking for anything. Except you. Now, will you listen? I'm a reporter. Clark Kent, working for the Daily Planet. The Daily Planet? Yes, your friend Jay Hamlin, assistant editor. He sent me down here. With your daughter, Elsie. Elsie? Don't tell me she's here. Oh, doctor, she's been worried to death. She asked us to help her. If I knew what I was doing, you shouldn't have come here or brought Elsie. But you were killing her with anxiety. I was afraid something had happened to you. I was killing her. You killed her by bringing her here. What? And maybe killed us all. Where is she? Quick, where is she? She's right downstairs in the library. Doctor, come down and talk to her, will you? There's no fool, you don't know. What? You don't know what's happening here. I can't go down. Why not, Doctor? What's wrong? I tell you, I can't. I I can't leave this room. Oh, Mr. Kent! Help! Get away! Don't you touch me! Help! 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 Come on, Doctor, quick! Downstairs! Miss Beecham! Miss Beecham! Come on, man, I'm, I'm coming. Look out for the stairs, Doctor! There was a light down there. Elsie! Miss Beecham! Where's the light? Oh, what's happening? I can't see. Kent, strike a light. Wait a minute. My matches. Elsie! Elsie! Here we are. Now we can see something. There. Look, where is she? Kent, where's my daughter? What? Where? You fool, I told you. You brought her here, and now? Now she's gone. Miss Beecham! Miss Beecham! Elsie! Elsie, where are you? Laughed at 
Dorothy House rings with echoes, but no answer comes. Elsie Peacham has vanished. Where has she gone? What shadowy figure came stealing in through the half-broken door? And finally, what is the secret that Dr. Beecham has been guarding so carefully in Stone House? Guarding with his very life. Be with us again next time and follow the story. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Now, Superman. Mighty visitor from another world with the strength of a hundred men. Physical structure undreamed of and unattainable by earthbound humans. Champion of the weak and the oppressed. Tireless fighter for the cause of truth and justice. When we last saw him, Clark Kent was at Stonehouse in Brentwood. Ghost-like and forbidding retreat of Dr. George Haven Beecham, world-famous scientist and explorer. With him was the doctor's daughter, Elsie, come on a desperate attempt to discover why her father has deliberately cut himself off from his friends and family since his return from his latest expedition to the jungles of South America. Finally breaking into the apparently deserted house, Kent has left Elsie on the lower floor. While he investigates footsteps in an upper room, he finds Dr. Beecham ready to defend himself against intruders with a knife and gun. Just as Kent is about to offer explanations, a ringing scream brings both men racing back downstairs to the library. Everything is in darkness. Kent strikes a match. They stare about and find that Elsie has vanished. Elsie! Where Beecham. are you, Elsie? Miss Beecham! Look like it's a lounge there. Maybe she fainted and fell. No, doctor. Where's that draft coming from? Quick, maybe she's out that way. That's how we got in. Broke a door down. Come on, doctor. Look, it's open. That's the way she went. She must have seen something or been frightened by something inside the house. Well, she was carried away. The devils, if they've done that, if they're trying to get at me that way. Come on, Kent. Zingri. Zingri. Careful when you go out, doctor. No, not a sign of anything out here. Better get back inside. Where is she? Elsie. Elsie! Doctor, it's not safe out here, I know. You think I care about that when they've got my daughter? You brought her here, you're responsible for this. Why don't you go and bring her back? Doctor, I'll do that, only we don't know yet where she is. Now, look here, you go back and search the house. What are you going to do? Elsie! I'll stay out here, and if she's anywhere on the grounds, I'll find her. Kent, you're right. She may be inside after all. Elsie! Elsie, where are you? But I will find her, too. It's humanly possible. Or rather, Superman will. Time for running around on foot. This is where Superman takes to the air. Too dark to see very well. First off, where did I leave that giant naked? He broke in and carried her off. No telling where she is now. I thought I'd finished with him. But if I didn't, he recovered his senses. This is where he ought to be. Ah, he's gone. Vanished. Now, if I can find him, I may find Elsie, too. What's that? It's a car. One man driving all by himself. Well, I'll just yank you out of that and your car can go where it likes. Hey, 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 what the, what the, oh, quit, quit, let me go. You'll wreck me. Come along, let go of that steering wheel. You and I are going to have a little talk. No, no. There, now, come on. Who, who are you? Never mind about me. We're talking about you. Where did you come from? And who did you come with? Where are they now? Come on, quick. Talk. Listen, boss. Honest. All I did is drive the car. I'm Eddie Hilly. Whose car? The, the fellas that came here. Two of them. Little brown guys. Little? Did you say little? Uh, yeah. Well, not dwarf, but they wasn't no giant. Sure of that? Wouldn't lie to me, would you? Oh, no, no. You sure one of them wasn't a giant? A big, tall fellow, almost black? No. No. They were small, I tell you. Both of them. All right. Where did they come from and what do they want? Uh, mister, I don't know. Honest. They picked me up in town and hired me to drive them out to Brentwood. Said they'd give me a good pay. That's all. Honest. Well, I think you need a little ride up in the air. No, no, no. I'm giving it to you straight, mister. Honest, I am. If that's all you know, why did you try to get away from here so fast? Why didn't you stop when you saw me standing there in the road? Uh, mister, how did I know who you was? 
You might have been a cop in that blue outfit. I figured I had enough. Oh, and what made you decide that? Too much funny business. First a lot of yells, then dogs, then a drum beating. Give me the creep. What else? Plenty. Just as I was getting ready to blow, a big gorilla comes loofing along. What? A big black man? Uh, mister, that wasn't no man. Never mind that. Where did he go? I didn't wait to see. I took one look and I didn't hear fainted. And that, that's all I know. So help me. This time I believe you. Just the same, you're coming with me. Oh, no, no, wait, listen. Ah, no, you... now you won't get hurt. That's a promise. Oh, hey, 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 we're, we're going up in the air. Hey, no, put me down, mister, put me down. Oh, oh no, wait, wait, please, mister, please. Oh, oh. All right, that's that. Now, you come along with me. Uh, no, not in that house. It's spooked. I ain't going in there. Oh, yes, you are, and right now, too. Take a look at me first. Hey, you're changed. You got regular clothes on. Right. And if you think you've been flying through the air, you've just been imagining things, understand? What? Hey, listen. I know mighty well I was flying. I say you weren't. Unless you want to fly again and much higher. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. Not me. Remember what I say. Now forget all about it. Huh? Oh, 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 sure, sure. I, I, I catch. Yeah, boss. Whatever you say. All right. Yeah. I say, Kent, are you there? Right here, Doctor. Outside the house. Hey, it's been your voice, mister. Remember what I say? Oh, sure, sure, boss. You bet. No talk. None at all, Doctor. How about you? Kind of a... Who's this? Where did he come from? That's what I'm trying to find out myself. Apparently, he drove two little brown men out here to pay a call on you. Oh, he did, did he? Uh -huh. Then it's you I have to thank for the disappearance of my daughter. Oh, no, sir. Not me. I ain't seen nobody's daughter. Doctor. Flew past my head. Yeah, mine too. Hey, what is this? Inside the house, quick! No, no, get Elsie. You can't leave her out here. Doctor, get inside. We'll find Elsie later. Now, quick! You too, come on. Go on there, move! <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice. Doctor, quick! Come on, inside the house! Yeah, here we are. All right, block up that doorway now. <laughs> quick! Come on, bring that bar. That's it. Ah, that's solid enough, I guess. There we are. <laughs> Mister. What is that out there? I think I'm going crazy. What's going on here? Well, for one thing, those little brown men you brought out here, I think they're doing their best to kill the whole lot of us. Uh, Kent, Kent, just one moment. That that taxi driver, wh where is he? Is he is he there? It's so dark, I, I can't see. Yeah, right here, Chief. Look here. These, these men that you drove out, did they carry anything with them when they, uh, when they left the car? Yes, they, they did. One of them had a long piece of bamboo. Bamboo? Hollow? Was it hollow? Hollow? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess it was, all right. Kent, that's it. What? They they brought a blowgun to shoot poison darts. Oh, God. And if one of them so much as licks your skin... What's that? What did you say, Chief? I say keep out of sight. Don't stand in front of those windows. Great Scott! Yeah. See? By no means stand in front of windows. I think that Elsie is out there somewhere. Oh, I, I tell you, I can't stand it. I tell you, I can't. Easy does it now, easy. Wherever she is, they haven't got her. How do you know that? Well, because if they did have her, they wouldn't be peppering us with arrows or darts either. They'd use her as a hostage. Whatever it is, they're after. Just a moment. H how do you know they're after anything? Dr. Beecham, I'm not deaf and blind, and, and you said yourself that... I? What did I say? Why, when I broke into your room upstairs. Said they'd never get what they were after. Doctor, what is this? Don't you think you'd better tell me? Kent, if, if I do, you'll be in the same position that, that I am. I've sworn to go through with this myself and, and not to put anyone in the danger that I've been in. But, Doctor, I've said as much as you are. I, uh, doctor! Dr. Beecham, what's the matter? Hey, look. He's staggering. He's sick. Doctor. Kent. Kent, I, I think that one of those darts hit him. Doctor, quick. What can I do? There must be something. Danny. Danny, doctor. Kent. Doctor, Kent. tell me. Tell me. His right hand pocket shows serum. And I'm the only man that knows it. Quick. Right-hand pocket. Wait a minute. Yes, I have it. It's a glass tube. 
with a needle. All right, doctor, what do I do? No, no, it isn't, doctor. Doctor, doctor, wake up. Listen to me. What do I do with this needle? Doctor. Yes, all right. Right? Your shoulder. Wait a minute. No, no. Look, keep awake, doctor. I'm doing it. I'm doing just what you said. Look. Wait a minute. There. There it goes. Yes. Doctor, hang on. Don't let go. You haven't told me yet. Doctor. Doctor, what is it? Struggling to speak, the heavy form of Dr. Beecham slumps over on the lounge. Has the poison on the dart done its work? Is he too far gone to be brought back by the serum? What strange and unbelievable mystery lies behind the sacred emerald of the Inca? And where is Elsie Beecham? Be with us again next time and follow the story of Superman. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! <laughs> Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! <laughs> Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman, a strange visitor from another world who has come down to Earth as the champion of the weak and the oppressed. When we last saw him, Superman, in his character of Clark Kent, was in the library of Stone House, a suburb of Brentwood, attempting to revive Dr. George Haven Beecham, world-famous scientist and explorer, who had been struck by a poison dart which came through the window. Outside in the dark, mysterious brown figures from the jungles of South America are besieging Stone House in an attempt to recover the sacred emerald of the Incas, which Dr. Beecham brought back from his latest expedition. Elsie, the doctor's daughter, has vanished. So has his native servant, Zingsby. As our story continues today, an hour has passed. The taxi driver, whom Superman found on the ground, has fled in terror to the cellar. Dr. Beecham is rapidly recovering as Kent bends anxiously over him. Two o'clock, Doctor. Be daylight in another couple of hours. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm all right. I'm, I'm quite all right. But Elsie, Kent, where's my daughter? Doctor, I, I don't know. She's out somewhere, Kent. They've got her, those murderous natives. I don't think so, Doctor. I don't know where she is, but I don't think they've got her. That, that taxi driver, where's he? Scared out of his wits. He's down in the cellar. Kent, the door, they're trying again. Block it up. Stay back, Doctor. I'll handle this. What are you doing, man? Don't open it. Doctor, did you hear that? Elsie, your daughter. Where? Elsie, darling. Miss Beecham. Oh, help me quickly. Who's that with you? Great Scott. Zingri. It's Zingri. Oh, Get him inside. Dad. He's hurt. Dad. Get him in and close the door. Quick. Dad, he's been struck with poison dart. Can you help him? Save him. Who was it? Two little brown men. They broke into the house and carried me away. Zingri followed him and fought them off. Oh, but he couldn't escape their dart. Lend a hand, Kent. Right. Get him up on the couch. All right, Doctor. I have him. There. How is he? Bad, I'm afraid. No more serum. Oh, please, Dad. Miss Beecham, how did you know who he was? Mr. Kent, he told me. When he fought off the brown men, he asked me who I was. When I told him, he said, you come quick. I, Zingri. Oh, Dad, can't you help him? I'm afraid I can't, Elsie. It's too late. Doctor, you mean... The poison on the dart acted fast. Oh, don't let him die. He saved my life. It's duty, Elsie. You must <laughs> face him. Doctor, look. I know. I'm afraid that's the end. Oh, Doctor. You sure? There's nothing you can do? Yes, it's all over. 
better carry him into the other room. All right. all about? What does it mean? I really think we ought to know that, Doctor. You started to tell me once before, just, just before the poison dart struck Dad, me. did they hit no, you? No, no, it's all right, Elsie. Nothing happened. It was just the graze. Ken helped out quite nicely. Oh, are you sure? Oh, perfectly. Look at him. You're awfully pale. Oh, naturally. He's been through a good deal, Miss Beecham. So have you. I really think you'd both better sit down. Yes, yes. Here on the Davenport, Elsie. Are you sure that poor Zingri really fought off the Azatlan? Fought off what, Doctor? Aztlan Indians, Ken, from the headwaters of the Orinoco. That's who those fellows outside are. But, Dad, please, what's it all about? Why were you hiding in this house? Oh, we've been so worried. It's a long story, Elsie. I'll make it short if I can. Now, listen, both of you. You know what an emerald is. Why, of course. What's the biggest emerald you ever saw or heard of? Goodness, I don't know. Well, there's the Star of the Andes. The southern flame, they're pretty big. Right, never mind carats. Let's talk about inches. The star's about an inch across, uh -huh. and the flame maybe an inch and a half. Yes. What would you say to an emerald carved in the form of a statue, a statue of a god? It would have to be pretty small. Three inches wide, and every bit of eight inches high. What? A genuine emerald that big? Dr. Beecham, it hardly seems possible. Oh, you're surprising. Well, that's what I brought back with me from the jungles of South America. That's why I've been hiding out back of an electrified fence guarded by the most vicious pair of dogs I could buy. But why? Dad, who's trying to get the emerald back? As the Glen Indians. Thousands of years they've been living here. The most sacred idol of the tribe. Dr. Beecham, how in the world did you get it? I stole it. Did you say you stole it? I had to. It's the only way. I had to have that emerald. Imagine what it might be worth to Ken. Millions, at least. Probably it's entirely beyond his money, and I wouldn't tell him a thing about it because it would mean to give it back eventually. It has another value. It's beyond the price. Oh, but I don't understand. Well, thousands of years ago, the ancestors of the Azatlan were one of the great nations of Egypt, called Morgan. Go on, Doctor. Dad, what did the emerald have to do with it? That's what you've never been able to find out. That is what it's saying. Remember Ponce de Leon? The Spanish explorer? Wait, he tried to find the Fountain of Youth. Yes, that's what it means, Carol. Rumor. He heard of the secret and he tried to find it. He did. That's where he failed. I hope I may have succeeded. My good heavens. Dr. Beecham, you, you can't mean it. Some way I don't exactly know how I can see it wrapped up in that emerald carving. The secret of a full life. A life without any of the faults and troubles of today, without without greed, without evil, without hate. Possibly the secret of life itself, hidden in that stone. Doctor, what what can you do with it? Every inch of that little statue is covered with engravings, ancient writings. And you're trying to decipher those writings? Yes, I'm trying. So far, I have not succeeded, but I intend to keep on working. Yes, but, Doctor, it's too dangerous. You can't possibly keep on working. Oh, can't you see the secret? If I could unlock that secret, the secret of those writings, imagine what it would mean. Not for me, Dad, what is it? What is the secret? You're sure it's contained in the carvings of the statue? Yes. Not one of the tribe's guarded so far. They knew too much of the plain idol world. Did you say the emerald was in a safe upstairs? Yes. Would you like to see it? Doctor, if I were you, I'd leave it there. We still don't know what's going on outside. He may be right, Dad. You haven't decided yet how you're going to go on tomorrow, the next day, what you're going to do from now on. He is right. Things can't go on like this. What about calling in the police, Doctor? Or taking the emerald to a museum and working on it there. Dad, what's the matter? Something, Doctor. Ah! Great.
Good heavens. That, that was an explosion. Upstairs. Doctor, it was in that room. Quick. Oh, Dad, be careful. The safe. They've blown in the side of the house. Oh, look. Look, the whole second floor is coming down. Doctor, look out. Come back. Doctor. <laughs> Stairway. It's blocked off. We can't get up that way now. Quick, the back stairs. We may head them off. Go ahead, Doctor. You and your daughter try the other way. I'll stay here. You may not be able to get through here, and Clark Kent might not be able to either. But Superman can, and it's time he tried. <laughs> Whole upper floors come right down the staircase. Ceiling and all. Won't take long to clear out a little thing like that. Ken! Ken, where are you? Oh, Dad! Dad, no! We're blocked in! Ken, where are you? Now what? Something's happened. The wall must have fallen in behind them. It's all right! I'm coming! This thing's so dark! Ken, the safe! Where's the safe? What did they do? Almost through. Get this beam out of the way. There. Now then. If I can get through that room, I think I can. Oh, Mr. Kent, is that you? I can't see a thing. Light a match quickly. Half a second, Doctor. Oh, here's a match. I have one. There. Great heavens, look. The safe. It's blown wide open. Oh, Dad, you can't get to it. The floor's all blown away. It's just resting across a beam. Kent, they've got it. Blew the safe and took the emerald. The emerald of the Incas is gone. Oh, Mr. Kent, don't try to get to that window. You'll fall. No. Listen, both of you. Don't you hear something? Listen. Yes, it's an airplane. They're getting away in an airplane. Well, that couldn't be. There isn't room enough. Well, they couldn't get off the ground. I know an airplane engine when I hear one. And look, there it goes. No, it's an airplane, but not the kind you think. Miss Beecham, doctor, look. They're getting away in an auto gyro. Look, up there. Rising over the trees from the grounds of Stone House is a weird, ungainly object. Huge propeller whirling, ascending almost vertically in the night air. As the brown men from the dark jungle made off with the emerald of the Incas, is the secret of the immortal people lost beyond recall? Or will Superman recover it? Be with us again next time and follow the story. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Now, Superman. When we last saw him, Superman, in his character of Clark Kent, was at the suburban hideaway of Dr. George Haven Beecham, world-famous explorer, Dr. Beecham and his daughter Elsa. A crafting explosion had brought them racing upstairs to find a section of the house blown in. Missing from the safe was the mysterious sacred carving, the Emerald of the Inca, the explorer had brought back from his latest expedition to South America. Rising in the moonlight above the trees beyond the house, was the fantastic form of an autogyro. Our story continues today. Several minutes have passed. Kent is about to leap from the window and follow the vanishing plane when a sudden cry from Elsie makes him turn. Oh, oh. What's the matter, Elsie? What is it? Oh, that's my, my ankle. I, I think I turned it. Here, take my arm, Miss Beecham. Or l- let me carry you back downstairs. I'm all right. Really, I am. Elsie, are you sure? I am, truly. My ankle's not even sprained. Well, doctor, look. If Miss Beecham's really all right, I think it might be better if I tried to get one of the cars outside and follow that autogyro. Dad, he's right. I don't know. I, I can't think. Doctor, they've got the emerald. If there's a chance of getting it back... How can you do it, Mr. Kent? You don't know which way they've gone. What do you think, Doctor? Which way would they go? Hard to tell. They might be heading for water. We're almost on the sound. They may have a boat lying offshore. Good. I'll bet that's it. I'll take a car and follow them. Why, man, you can't possibly. They'll leave you behind in no time. No, they won't. An autogyro isn't fast. I may be able to catch them right away. I'm going after that plane. Why, Mr. Kent. Kent, what are you doing? You can't climb out that window. Oh, yes, I can. Why, Mr. Kent, you'll break your neck. No, I won't. So long. If I catch them, I'll find a telephone somewhere and let you know. (sighs) Now then, one little jump and I'm down. They'll think I've climbed on the trellis. (sighs) Now, off into the trees, where the cars are. They can't see me go up in case they're looking. Ah, this ought to do it. (laughs) 
No sense using a car to catch a plane. That auto gyro's heading out to sea. I'll soon find it. Up, up, and away! Red cape streaming in the wind, blue costume flashing in the moonlight. Superman leaps into the air, hovers a moment, takes off in a series of widening circles to find the auto gyro, which the priests of the tribe of Azatlan are making off with the emerald of the Inca. Suddenly he sees the flash of the silver wing over the waters of the sound, levels out in a straight line, while from the auto gyro itself, the brown men talk together. Where is the emerald? Safely hidden. Did you arrange matters back at the house? I did. By this time, the palace of the white doctor should blaze like a hundred fires. Good. What do you look at? We are over water. How far do we go this way? Some miles. Look. Back there behind us. In the moonlight. I see nothing. Wait. Went into the shadow of a cloud. Now. What is it? A man. The figure of a man flying in the air. No. No, it, it cannot be. Even the magic of the Azatla... I tell you, it is. Look. He comes closer. He is over our heads. I saw him. Look. Look, he's coming through. Through the door. Sorry, gentlemen. Forgive my breaking in like this. Where's the emerald of the Incas? No speak. No speak, Yankee. Well, you'll speak at this time. Where's that emerald? Quick. White man. What you seek was stolen. It is ours. Now, look here. I'm not going to argue about that now. I want that stone. Where is it? We have taken it back. We will never find it. Think not? Well, I may not find it, but you will. And you'll find it right now and hand it over. No. No. I say yes. Where is it? Find it. Use your magic against the magic of us at last. I will. You've seen a little of magic already. Just a very little. I call it the magic of Krypton. Now you're going to see a lot more. Come here. Oh, now you let me go. I said come here, both of you. Yes, you too. I kill you, white man. Ah, you've already tried. Now listen. I'll give you one more chance. Then I'll knock your heads together. No, no. Where is that emerald? Look. Look behind you, white man. <laughs> Old stuff. And even if I did, what could you do? No, no. He means fire. Fire back on shore. What of it? Magic of the Azatlan, white man. That fire is in the house where the emerald... What? Stone house? The house of the white doctor who stole the sacred goddess in flame. Look. You mean that fire is back at Dr. Beecham's? Look how it leaps up. Fingers of flame. Look, it shows for miles. The house of evil is gone. We'll see about that. And if it is, you've signed your own death warrant. Where are we? Uh, over water. Good. Let go. You win for the moment, but not for long. This auto gyro will float down there on the water, and that's what it's going to do. Not what you do! Just what I said. I'm going to wreck this plane, send it down to float on the sound. So you'll be sure and be there when I get back. Now I'm going to smash that front propeller. There. Now, down with it. I don't want it to land too hard. Down. Down. Ah, oh, there's a boat down there. Well, I can't help that. They can't do much. Now. 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 And into the water. There. That'll keep them quiet for a while. Now back to that pirate stone house. Up. Up. Oh, I've got my hurry. They've caught Elsie and the doctor. I'll take care of them when I get back. Higher. And faster. Faster. Back at Stone House, red flames lick hungrily at beams and walls, roar up into the night sky. Elsie and Dr. Beecham, having escaped in the nick of time from the blazing furnace, stand on the lawn, stunned, unbelieving. Then suddenly. Oh, Dad! Dad! Elsie, what is it? You're not hurt. Dad, I just remembered. Down in the cellar, that taxi driver. Oh, good heavens. Oh, Dad, he never knew. He must have been trapped by the explosion. Then when the fire came. Oh, Dad, he's down there now. He can't get out. Oh, the poor man. What can we do, Dad? Elsie, come back. We can't do a thing. Not till someone sees the blaze and calls the fire department. Dad, we must. We've got to get him out. Elsie, come back here. Come back. Come back, Miss Beecham. Where are you going? Why, Ken, where did you come from? Oh, quick, quickly. Why, Miss Beecham, what's wrong? 
That, that taxi driver, Eddie Hilly, he's yes? still in the cellar. What? Oh, great Scott. I, I forgot all about him. I can't do something. Get him out. Now, look. Stay here, both of you. I may be able to get in from the other side. You can't be careful. Let me help. No, no, no. I, you stay where you are, doctor. Look after Elsie. Now then. Seems to me there's a lot of work for Superman tonight. Poor Hilly. That fire's got down to where he was. Well, here goes. He has him. He's got him. Kent, Kent, this way. Back out of the smoke. Oh, Mr. Kent. Poor man. Vigilant. Look after him, will you? I'm about all in. Just put him down on the grass, Mr. Kent. All right. I'll look after him. He's coming around right now, I think. Why, Kent, man alive, how did you do it? Oh, doctor, I, I don't know. It was it was just luck, I guess. There was an air shaft, and, well, the, the wall fell down, and there he was at the bottom. So all I had to do was pick him up and get him out. Oh, well, I, I've got to be on my way again now. What? Well, where are you going? Well, don't you remember? I was after that autogyro. I saw the flames and I came back. Well, Kent, you'll never catch it now. Well, it won't hurt to try. You never can tell, Doctor. Anyway, I'm off. Kent, wait. Come back a minute. Kent. Oh, Dad. Dad, why? Dad, what are you doing on your hands and knees? Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. I found it in the grass. Look. Well, what is it? Ugly thing. Well, it looks like a cheap earring. Let's see. That's a bad pocket. It's an amulet. Worn only by the highest priests of the Catholic Rite. But, Dad, what of it? I don't understand. It's given them when they become priests. Magic power and all that. It becomes a part of their very lives. But I... Why all the fuss? You see, Elsie, one of those priests dropped it by accident. The loss of this amulet is worse than death. A terrible crime. What? Oh, you mean that... I mean, I believe that with this amulet, I can induce them to let me borrow the Emerald of the Incas. But I don't know where they are. No, but I do, Dad. At least I, I know where they were going. Elsie. The taxi driver, he's come to and he told me they have a plane waiting. A great big seaplane at the central airport. Where's the car? Quick, Dad. Quick. Mad race against time. Can Dr. Beecham and Elsie make the airport before the priests of Azatlan take off in their high-speed seaplane? And what of Superman out over the waters of the Sound? What will he find when he reaches the spot where the auto gyro hit the sea? Thrills, high excitement, unbelievable climax. Tune in next time and follow the story of Superman. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Now, Superman. Superman had left the blazing inferno of Stonehouse gone winging his way back over the sound toward the wrecked auto gyro of the Indian priest, had recovered the emerald of the Incas from Dr. George Haven Beecham, world-famous scientist and explorer, and set fire to his temporary home. Remaining on the grounds of Stonehouse to watch the blaze and come and help, Dr. Beecham and his daughter Elsie had both made startling and important discoveries. As our story continues today, we find them in a small car, racing toward a distant airport, hoping against hope to get there in time. Listen. Watch out. Here's a curve. Elsie, you almost hit that car. Oh, oh Dad, it, it's all right. Look here. That thing you picked up on the lawn, you hardly told me about it at all. Providential. Simply providential. If we can only find those native priests. Well, what'll you do? I'll show them what I found. The sacred amulet of the head priest. Almost as sacred as the emerald itself, Elsie. Not quite, but almost. And you really think you can bargain with it? Only if I can get there. Only if we can make the airport before they can take off in their plane. Dad... What will you do? I'll return the amulet and borrow the emerald. That's all I want of it. I don't mean to keep it. I never intended that. Dad, this emerald, is it really as important as all that? Yes, Elsie, I've told you once, and I'll tell you again. 
If I can recover the emerald of the Incas and decipher the writing carved on its base, I may have found the secret of life itself. Possibly the secret of life everlasting. Oh, hurry, dear, faster if you can. I'm doing my best, Dad. We must get there in time to head them off. I tell you, we must. I wonder if that reporter, Kent, has found the auto gyro. Meanwhile, high over the water of the sound, Superman wings and wheels, his marvelous telescopic eyesight piercing the blackness below for some sign of the wrecked autogyro. I could have sworn this was the place. Just off that point with the white building. What? What's that? Far down below the surface. Looks like wreckage underwater. The plane was sunk deliberately. Well, the next thing to do is pay a call at the nearest station of the Coast Guard. White House looks like the place. There's the signal light. Down we go, right in the front yard. It's a shame to wake them out of a sound sleep. Chances are they keep somebody on duty all night anyway. In a moment, I'll have to become Clark Kent. For a man might amaze even the Coast Guard. All right, all right. That's a big rush. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, but... What, what is... Well, what is it? I'm looking for some friends of mine who set out this afternoon in an auto gyro. Oh, an auto gyro, hey? Yes. You know them fellas? Well, uh, we're acquainted. We've met. Well, they ain't here, but they've been picked up all right. Oh? Seems they had trouble and came down on the water a mile off. Indians, wasn't they? Oh, well, yes, more or less. Well, if they ain't, they sure got a swell tan. Anyhow, we brought them in and they beat it. Well, can you tell me where they've gone? Central Airport, they said. We couldn't understand half their lingo. They don't speak English so hot. Central Airport? You mean they've chartered another plane? I mean, they're leaving for parts unknown. They told me the time. It's just about five minutes from now. Five minutes? So unless you're figuring on getting to that airport by radio or flying there yourself, you're out of luck. It's 30 miles. Thanks. Sorry to have bothered you. Okay. Too bad you missed your friends, but maybe they won't take off. The barometer's falling. Looks like dirty weather coming up. Good night. Good night. So you think I've missed them, Seth, eh? Well, live and learn. Five minutes before they take off, huh? And the airport is 30 miles away. Well, you never know what you could do until you try. Here goes. Up. Up. Dad, look, there it is. That's the airport. Oh, and there's the gate. Elsie, what are you doing? You'll put us in the ditch. Sorry, can't help it, Dad. I had to make that turn. Would have gone right by if I hadn't. Look, what's that? Out there, out there on the runway. That isn't a runway. It's a seaplane anchorage. Oh, oh, there was a flash of lightning. It's a plane. It's going up. I saw it in the flash. Elsie, stop, stop. Help, help, stop that plane, stop it. Dad, come back. It's too late, they're moving. Oh, that's the rain. Dad, the storm. That must be the plane. Nobody else would be taking off in weather like this. Why doesn't somebody come? Stop them. Catch them. Somebody stop. High over the airport, a great white seaplane rocks and slips in the sudden grip of a storm. Lightning steps wickedly through low clouds. Shows figures running wildly for shelter on the field below. Shows another figure, faster than the storm itself, racing down the wind. Superman! Come just in time to meet a seaplane heading south with the Indian priests of Bazatlan. Ah, there she is. Must be. A private seaplane swinging toward the open water. And what fools to take off at a time like this. Great Scott, the lightning shows it up like daytime. Not that I need it. Sorry, gentlemen, you've got a fast ship there, but it's not quite as fast as Superman. I think we'll just put a sudden stop to that trip south. I brought down an auto gyro. Shouldn't one I could do the same with the seaplane. Here I come. Now then, if I dive into the cabin. What the? Great heavens, lightning. Both of lightning struck the plane and smashed to pieces on fire. The men are falling into the water. If I don't catch them, they'll be drowned. Got to get there fast. Down, down into the sea. Faster.
What happened, Elsie? I, I couldn't see. Oh, Dad, I don't know. The lightning. Uh, could you make it out, Elsie? No, Dad, I'm not sure. It seemed as if a, a bolt of lightning went right through the plane, and then I didn't see anything at all. Yes. Here's, here's stay under the shelter. But, Dad, good heavens, here comes Mr. Kent. Kent? Well, Kent, what, what did you... Good evening, Doctor. Or rather, good morning. You got room in here for three more? Why, those men with you, the brown men, Kent, the priests. Oh, yes, strangest thing. I was on my way here, following the auto gyro, when there was a flash of lightning and a seaplane went down in the sea, just off the breakwater. And you rescued them? All but one, Doctor. The pilot was done for. The lightning bolt went right through him. But these two, well, call it luck. Why, Kent, it's amazing. Simply unbelievable. Well, here we are. There's one thing I must tell you, Doctor. I had a choice. A choice? Yes, come over here a minute, will you? Yeah, that's better. Yes, a choice. I could have saved the baggage with whatever might have been in it. You understand, Doctor? Yes, I understand. The emerald. Yes, or the two priests. But I couldn't save both. It had to be one or the other. Mr. Kent, we understand. Human life, Miss Beecham. They've done a lot to you. Poison arrows, fire. But after all, well, there was something on their side, too. And I couldn't just sit there and let them drown. No, Kent, of course not. You did exactly right. Oh, I hoped you'd think that. It's too bad about the emerald, of course. No telling where it is now. The emerald of the Incas is gone. Forever. Mr. Kent, one of the priests, he's coming this way. White men, you save our lives. We of Azatlan, we thank you. Oh, don't mention it. You have great magic, white man. Magic creatures are now. I have seen you fly through air. Oh, that, that's enough of that. Never mind the rest. There's just one thing we wanted. Uh, we know what you want. The sacred emerald. But it is at the bottom of the great water. Then it's all over. And if that's the case, there's no use my keeping this any longer. What's that, Doctor? Well, white man, where did you find that? On the lawn outside my house. It's an amulet, a priest's amulet of the Azatlan Indian. Could it by any chance be yours? White man, white man, give it to me. Of course, take it. Oh, oh my goodness. It seems to mean everything to him. White man, you think you have lost, but you have not. What? Well, what does he mean? My magic tells me you do not want the emerald to steal. No, no, of course not. On the emerald was writing. It was writing you wish to read? Yes, that's it. That's all I wanted it for. Believe me. Very well. Writing is here. Dad, what does he mean? He's tapping his head. You mean to say you'll tell me everything that was on the emerald? You, you can remember it? We will do that. Every last sign on the jewel of the immortal. But no one know what it means. Yeah, that's all right. My studies, that's what I want to do. Work it out. It may take me years. But, uh, Kent, do you hear what he says? Dad, I can't believe it. Maybe the secret isn't lost after all. Once my people know what writing on emerald means, now they do not know. If you help them remember, maybe you do great good to all. Kent, I, I still don't believe it. It's not possible. Why, Kent, where are you going? Mr. Kent! Well, look, the, the emerald's gone, but everything else is all right. And I've just remembered something. After all, I am a newspaper man. This may be the biggest story since the flood. Come on, folks. I'm on my way. And so, even though the sacred emerald of the Incas is lost to humanity forever, the secret engraved on it may yet be revealed. Undoubtedly, we will learn what progress Dr. Beecham makes at some later date. Meantime, Clark Kent is returning to his newspaper, the Daily Planet where unknown to him, another exciting adventure awaits. Don't fail to tune in next time and follow the thrilling story of Superman. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.